Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Thank you for joining me today. I am so thrilled to have you here. And as always, when I have a guest, I have a very special guest. And today is no different. We're going to talk a little bit about a lot of things today because my guest today, Rebecca George, is an author and she wrote the book, Do the Thing. And when we talk about do the thing, we're going to also talk about, you know, being business owners, we we often talk a lot about setting goals and I'll link some other episodes on goal setting in the show notes so that you can go and read those and get that information as well. But how we approach our goals is what really matters. And today we're going to chat about glory goals. I And you guys know me, I love alliterations. And so there are so many that we're going to have today. It's going to be kind of fun, but we're going to talk about glory goals and doing the thing. Rebecca George is a chapstick, yoga pant, and comfy sweater, Jesus-loving girl, just like me. I read in her book that she had to put her chapstick on to sit down and write one day, and I'm like, oh, yo, we're so soul sisters already. Um, Anyway, she is here to guide us to not only make the most of our goal setting, but to live and work intentionally to do the thing, to glorify God. With intention... And I love that word intention, and we may just focus a little bit on that today as well. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, Rebecca, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Oh, Robin, I'm so happy to be with you today. I love, I love what you do and just the conversations God has led you to have and and coaching and things. And so I'm just honored to be here and have this conversation. Well, thank you. It's truly an honor to be here. I've been following you on Instagram for some time and I'm always like, oh, she's kind of doing it all. Wow, she's really awesome. And I'm like, okay, I'm an author too, but she seems like she's getting a lot of glory. <laughs> and you know how your mind goes to those places uh, of comparison. Oh, totally. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Totally. But I was like, you know what? I really like her. And when I bought your book, I was like, I really, really like her. And I really want to have mm. her on my show because There's so many times we look at people and we see people online and there's this persona and then you really dive into who they are, like through their book or getting to know them, like through a podcast interview or whatever. And you're like, yes, wow. Like God really blessed them and he's blessing me through them. Mm. And so anyway, I had to have you on the show and I'm so glad you said yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to the point where you are today doing what you're doing and how you wrote the book, do the thing. Yeah, totally. I would say my desire to encourage and equip women and, and do the work I'm doing today has been in my bones probably all of my life, I can look back and, and I use the word thread a lot. I can kind of tug on that thread of how that was at play, maybe even 10, 12 years ago. You know, I was, I was discipling college girls on my living room floor, in my college dorm long before I was writing a book, right? It looks different in different seasons, but that desire in me to encourage and coach and write and speak has always been at play. And, and I think that's, what's so unique to discover as we think about doing our thing and being faithful in that, whether it's in business or writing or coaching or whatever it is. And, and that's kind of been my path. And uh, as you've read in the book, part of my story was my mom's cancer journey that she went through about 10 years ago. And that was a huge catalyst for me in terms of leading something for the first time on the other side of her story. God led me to start a ministry that I had for about five or six years where we donated handmade hats and handwritten letters of encouragement to cancer treatment centers all over America. We did work with St. Jude and MD Anderson and all sorts of awesome organizations. And in the process of leading something like that, I had the opportunity to speak a lot about what God was doing and how he had used my mom's story. And Robin, you'll relate to this. I would I'd step off stage after sharing what God was doing and I'd have women come up to me and say something to the effect of, I love what God did through your mom's hardship and suffering. I love what he led you to do on the other side of that. And I feel like I have my own version of it. I feel like God is stirring my heart towards a particular need I see in the world, or maybe a way I can use my gifts and talents for his glory And almost every time without fault, I would sense this shift 
in maybe their tone or their facial expression and something was holding them back. Sometimes it was fear. Sometimes it was doubt if they were the girl for the job. Sometimes it was just deep rooted insecurity. And so I would spend a few minutes kind of coaching them up and out of that, that place. Right. And I think as a creative and as a communicator, you, you have enough of those conversations that you begin to see themes of places when, where we're not rooting ourselves in biblical truth. Mm -hmm. And so there are results of that, which are, which are things that we experience because we live in a world of brokenness, things like fear, things like doubt, things like insecurity. And so I reached this point, Robin, where it was like, all right, not on my watch any longer, but like the buck stops with me. Like we're going to have a conversation about how we root ourselves in deep theological, biblical truth. So that when we face these moments of doubt and security, et cetera, it's not that we won't experience them because we're human, but when we do, we know where to turn. Right. And so, so that's kind of the long and short of my path to this book. Yeah, I love it. And there's so many things in what you just said that we could unpack. The one thing I want to emphasize is, well, two things, and we'll talk about both of them um, at a little more length. But one is, you know, when somebody has an idea, it's often like, oh, it's just my idea and other people are doing this. It's not going to work or I don't have what it takes or I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. But I want to assure anyone who's listening that is feeling that today if you aren't on the other side, reaching your goals and in that state of what you consider business success, it's really important to notice that if you're having those thoughts, you're having those feelings around this idea, God's calling you to something. Yeah. And if you just sit and procrastinate or sit in those negative thoughts, which, and Rebecca, I know you agree with this. Those are lies from, from Satan. Like he is there Absolutely. you into these lies. And the only way you can step out of that is to one, do the exercises to really hone in on your purpose and what mm -hmm. that calling is and who those people are you're meant to serve. And Rebecca and I both have Venn diagrams that we use and we'll talk about those in yeah. a few minutes. But then there's also navigating those negative thoughts. And I know listeners that you've heard me talk about those mindset barriers and those negative thoughts and how you have to catch them and challenge them and change them. And Rebecca has a model in her book as well. That's very similar to mine. And, you know, really looking at those thoughts, are these realistic or are they lies? Are, mm -hmm. are, is there any truth to this? And would, would someone I know, love and trust and respect be thinking the same thing about me? Mm. Would Jesus be thinking the same thing about me? And if the answer to any of those questions is no, it's time to change those thoughts because they're not real. And they're coming yeah. from some source Satan, the enemy, not the Holy Spirit, not, right. not Jesus, not anything positive or anyone positive that's going to move you into that place of purpose and calling. And that's really going to be the, the basis, I think, of our conversation today. And it's funny, yeah. listeners, because this morning I just said, Holy Spirit, I don't know where this conversation is going to go. There's so much to unpack in this book. And I want to bring light to Rebecca and her work, and I want to help the mm -hmm. listeners. So Whatever is said today, you guys, I'm telling you, it's going to be a holy moment because <laughs> yes. I'm literally just like turning it over because there's so much we could talk about. But with all of that being said, Rebecca, let's talk a little bit about your, in the book, your Venn diagram about mm -hmm. discovering your purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to. I love a visual. I love a tool that helps us do more than just kind of think about this nebulous thing that, be that becomes overwhelming to us, right? I think a lot of us are really um, held back and overwhelmed by the idea of purpose and calling. And so at a foundational level, I always love to say, and this is something we all know as followers of Christ, I'm not going to, this, this won't like blow your mind. This is like stating the obvious of as a follower of Christ, our mission, this side of heaven is the same. Jesus made it really clear, go and make disciples, right? And in the original language of that scripture, go and make disciples in the original language, it would have read as you are going, go and make disciples. And so as we are on our way, as we are going, go and make disciples. 
Robin, your life, my life, the listeners, every, every person tuning into this episode, their life will look different. Mine versus yours versus, versus theirs. God has placed us all in a unique community, um, for me that you will never know. And for you that I will never know. And we have an opportunity to impact that for the kingdom. And so a way to visually see that, that has been helpful for me is what I call the Venn diagram, the calling Venn diagram that you're referencing in the book. And it has three circles that we kind of brainstorm through with the Lord. And the first one is labeled what matters to you. I love brainstorming on where God has naturally gifted and wired you to serve him, to encourage others. It's things like, what are some things that you lose track of time when you're doing that particular thing? Or when you're, you're doing that thing, you experience such joy in exercising that gift or that talent, right? So brainstorming around that is a great starting place. The second bubble is labeled what matters to God. And that's where we really get to search the scriptures to see how does what matters to him, the gospel continuing to spread me going and making disciples, me doing everything I do for his glory. We we see some of those biblical truths that we know, but we're then able to connect it to what matters to you. Right. And then the third bubble is what matters to other people. So as we look around to our community within our local church, within Um, whatever community God has planted your feet in today, what are some practical needs that you see? If you were a business owner, creative, like most of us who are listening to this call, how are you serving and encouraging your customer, your listener, your reader um, in the way that God has wired you to do so? And so we then begin to see how all of those three things intersect. And that's really what we're searching for and what we're hunting for. I believe most of us and Robin, I think if one of those things is out of the picture, it's incomplete, right? If, if I notice a need that I see in the world and I see that that really matters to God also, but it doesn't matter to me and it doesn't give me joy. It's probably not the breadcrumb trail to my calling, right? Another example, if it really matters to me and it matters to other people, but it doesn't matter at all to God and his purposes as we're advancing his kingdom, this side of heaven, it's probably not worth my time. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it gives us a lot of clarity as we move forward um, and kind of discovering our thing. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, I love it. So in our, our, um, diagrams are so similar because I, I designed mine based on your values, your visions, Mm. your passions. So your values, visions, and passions, your values are those things that you're not willing to waver on. So Mm -hmm. like for me, it's faith. And if I am meant to be, you know, bringing more people to, to Christ, okay. The podcast is one great way to do that. But the other great way to do that is to coach Christian entrepreneurs who want to grow businesses because the more people they touch and impact the bigger that ripple effect of good is that we create in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is your visions. And I think this goes right along with like what matters to me, what matters to God and what matters to other people. And really looking at that as an entirety, because Mm -hmm. our visions for ourselves, you know, I've always envisioned myself teaching. I've always envisioned myself working intimately with people. So, you know, those things kind of lead you down that path as well. And then your passions. And it's what you said, Mm -hmm. what lights you up? What really gives you that joy, those butterflies in your tummy that you know that that's something worth doing. But what I love most about what you said is if we're lacking in any one of those three areas, it's probably not the right thing because God does want us to work in a state of joy. He Mm -hmm. wants us to be happy while we're working for him. Because if we're in a miserable state, we know that's not what he's calling us to do because then we're not being Christ-like and we're not witnessing for him to grow more disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that matters so much. And there's this balance that we walk this side of heaven of God has knit in us a kingdom purpose that we get to advance. God doesn't need to use us to advance his purposes, but he, we get the joy of getting to be used by God, this side of heaven. And then there's joy in that because there's joy in him, right? Mm -hmm. Ultimately 
And, and I think some of the worldly narratives that we've seen over the last five to 10 years have done nothing um, to fix our eyes on scripture. And in, in, in terms of joy, we, we equate joy to happiness and, and other things when at the root, you know, we, we think back to scriptures, like the joy of the Lord is our strength. Like our, our, our joy is rooted in the identity of, of who God is and who we are in him because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Like that's, that's joy. And in serving God and knowing him more and living out of that place, we experience joy in him hundred percent mm-hmm. full stop. And as a follower of Christ, that path um, is not promised with ease. It's not promised with, um, without suffering. It's not promised without hardship. And in that pressing and in that hard that we experience in our calling comes big thought, theological word comes sanctification comes that process of us being molded and refined and shaped day in and day out more into the likeness of Jesus. And in that process, we become more of who he intended us to be more like him. And as we mold more into his likeness and know more of him, we experience more of that joy. So it's like this beautiful cycle that we get to walk through with the Lord as we discover more of him And so as you're talking, that's coming to mind for me too, of of not discounting the listener coming to the conversation, really walking through a hard season right now. You've not missed it because you're walking through suffering or hardship. Actually, that's an opportunity to be molded more into the likeness of Jesus. Mm, I love that so much. And it's so true. I think people think, um, and I'm not going to like stereotype and say, everybody thinks this, but I think a lot of people think that, oh, well, if I'm a Christian, it's going to be smooth sailing. And that is not the case. Like, you know, Jesus calls us to be Christ-like and we live in an era (laughs) where it is really hard not to get inundated and feel fear or to compare ourselves with other people because of everything we see online. And when that happens, we're pulled away. And we have to work hard to stay aligned. And there's nothing that gives him greater joy is when we come to him and we seek him. And I love the verse and I'm Paul, I want to say it was in Galatians, but it's the one where, um, you know, whatever, whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever is noble. Think of those Philippians, Philippians four. Philippians four. Yes. Yes. I think it is Philippians four. And, you know, when you are having any of those negative thoughts or feeling like you're in that place. Well, I started this business because I thought it was my calling and now I'm not getting clients or I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so overworked. And this entrepreneurship thing is so overwhelming. Think about that verse because, and I'll give you the exact verse in the show notes, everybody. So don't worry about that. I will provide that for you, but really think about that because I think the more we think of someone like Paul, who was imprisoned, he, you know, he didn't have an easy walk trying to be a disciple. And if someone like him, who was so intimately integrated with Christ and the faith walk, if he experienced that hardship, how are we not going to experience something similar, but his ability to say, you know what, I've made all, all these mistakes and I can accept those and I can accept the hardships because I know Jesus is on the other side of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you think about Paul, you think about the life and ministry of Jesus. And I'm thinking of that scripture and and this is Paul's well, just saying I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not I that live, but he, but he lives in me. And, um, and even the scripture of looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the father. Like Jesus himself experienced deep loss and rejection and mocking and beating and, and crucifixion. And all of those, all of those things was, they were part of God's purpose for his life and ministry. So that 
our relationship with God, the father would be restored. And so this side of heaven, we experience those hardships as well. And those, I mean, again, those are the things that refine us. And, and at times I also think what prepares us to be able to lead in a particular way, I, I would be willing to bet if we listen to some different listener stories and we had more time to swap stories of our lives and how God's molded and refined us. God's done some things in me, um, as a result of, of hardship that were very necessary and where he was taking me and that I'm now able to lead for because of what I've walked through. And so we can't discount those things, you know? No, no. And I think Rebecca, you know, you're, you're creative and I'm a creative. And I think there are a lot of creatives out there and I'm, I'm going to call my sister out on this because she is so incredibly talented and she's a, I don't even know what you call these I don't even know what you call these kind of cookies she makes, but they're gorgeous. They're the really fancy mm. cookies, you know, that oh, you yeah. see at weddings and things. Beautiful. Like, that's what she does. And she goes, I'm just a cookie maker. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Because every single person you touch through one of those cookies, you've shined Jesus light on them because you've that's done right. it out of a heart of love. And you're listening to scripture when you make your cookies, you're, you know, listening to sermons, you're doing like such amazing things, just being able to give someone else a smile. But I think of your journey, like, and I've experienced the journey with a parent with cancer as well. Mm -hmm. That is a hardship. It is so hard to watch someone else suffer and to experience the fear of loss at the mm -hmm. same time. And, you know, you could use that creative gene that you have, and you could then create something so magnificent to shed light on other people. And mm -hmm. I think there's, there's so many opportunities for that when we go to that place of, okay, I'm not going to let the enemy and I'm not going to let these negative thoughts hold me back. I'm actually yeah. going to take the gifts I have and I'm going to mm -hmm. use them for good. Yeah. 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 We get the opportunity to do that every day and we never know how God will use will use us on the other side of that hardship. Right. And that's really easy for me to say 10 years on the other side of my mom's cancer journey. And she's now cancer free. Like I, I realize there are people listening to this right now who are in the midst of hard, hard situations of suffering. And so I, I, I don't want to discount and jump to the joy and not sit with you in that moment because yeah. I know so deeply and intimately what that feels like. You are not alone in it. You are not alone. And I mean, you've read the book, so you, you've heard me kind of allude to a couple of these stories, but one of the things that God continually reminds me of is just the fact that as a follower of Christ, we know we're not alone. We love hearing that. We love saying that, but we don't go far enough with it to remember that the Holy spirit, the very, the very same power that raised Jesus from the grave is living in us as a follower of Christ. Like we read that scripture in Romans and, and we maybe memorize that as a child. Like I did, I was raised in the church, but do I live like the very power that raised Jesus from the tomb is inside of me as a Christ follower, empowering me, emboldening me, giving me wisdom and strength as I, as I endure hardship, as I lead, as I encourage that I'm not alone in that. Um, and even before we started this episode, Robin, you said you were honest and said, I, I was praying this morning that the Holy spirit would just guide our conversation that's the life that we get to live with Christ. As we obediently follow him, we get to lean into the Holy spirit as we have these hard moments of suffering, or as we're leaning on God for wisdom, the book of James, James one tells us that he gives us wisdom liberally without reproach. When we ask him for that, it's one of the things I most often will pray for is, is just his wisdom and discernment as I make decisions. And, and that's the access to God that we have because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. I think as women, um, and we could probably, we could go on a tangent here that we don't have time for, but as women, we love hearing phraseology like, you know, I'm enough. 
I am worthy in Christ. Right. And we, those phrasings feel so good to us for good reason, but we don't take it far enough to remember that the only reason I am enough, the only reason I'm worthy is because of what Jesus did on the cross and the access that it gave me to God, the father and how it restored my relationship with him that was broken because of sin. Right. And, and that's the truth, the foundational truth that we have to root ourselves in and stand on as we look forward into these moments in our calling, as we walk through suffering, all the things that you and I've talked about in this episode, um, we can only move forward with that foundation, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. And as you were talking, I, you know, I was thinking to myself, I think there's a lot of faith, um, denominations or churches that miss the boat on the emphasis of the Holy spirit. And it totally. was until the past couple of years where, you know, I read, uh, Je- Jeannie Cunyon's book, um, don't miss oh, out. Don't miss out. She's incredible. And that just changed my entire perspective because mm-hmm. it's, I'm not alone anymore on this journey. Yeah. And when you don't feel alone, when you feel like even if you can't reach your coach or you can't reach your spouse or you can't reach your best friend, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And that power within you is indeed what makes us worthy. Yeah. 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 And it, It you know, it changed my perspective so much so that I could like today say, you know Mm -hmm. what, this book is is so full. I I don't even know where to begin. And I really want to do a good job. And it's not that I was, nervous or fearful of the interview. It was that there is a message in here that somebody in the audience needs to hear today. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted that conversation to be led by somebody besides me, somebody that knows specifically listeners, what, what you're striving for, what you need. And I think the, the two biggest things we can use as takeaways here. Well, there's more than two, but you know, the first would be that the Holy spirit lives within you. And Mm -hmm. if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you strive to be like Jesus Christ, Christ, that joy and that strength and that success and that wisdom is going to come to you. It may take time, but that's what patience and perseverance are about. Mm -hmm. And we know that we are called to persevere. We're not called to give up. We're called to persevere. And when we take action every day, towards setting goals and doing the things that we're called to do. And we do that with intention. We're more likely to get to experience all of that Mm -hmm. joy that Mm -hmm. comes with whatever it is we're being called to do. But I also want to, to reemphasize, you know, if you are struggling to understand what your calling is and you can't make sense out of the fact that the success that you want isn't coming quickly enough, Mm -hmm. sit down and do those exercises that Rebecca and I shared with you, because whether you're, you know, just starting out or you've already made six figures, but all of a sudden now you feel like something's off and I'm not getting the clients that I really want to work with, or my business seems to be flailing. I feel like I'm spinning in circles, sit down and do these exercises because sometimes the direction we think we were supposed to be on shifts. And mm-hmm. so take the time to do that exercise, to reacquaint yourself to your own self, but also what your calling is. And then do those exercises for the mindset to really sit down and evaluate. Is this the truth? Is it a lie? Is this realistic? Is it not? And if, mm-hmm. if those questions, the response is no, change them, right? Change those thoughts. Yeah. And it's easier said than done, but you all have a pen and paper so you can sit down and you can map this out and write it down and then change those neural pathways that God so miraculously made in our brain to be able to be changed. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Do you have anything to add about that, about your model for the changing those negative thoughts? Yeah, I think we touched on it earlier, but the only thing I would add would be I mean, it's just straight from scripture. It's that Philippians four passage that Paul talks about of what we should be thinking about. Um, so if, if you can't remember it, just remember that, that passage that probably feels really familiar to most of us of, is it lovely? Is it pure? Is it worthy of praise? He, he says, think on these things. And so I 
essentially liken it to two separate lists of questions. The first set of questions asks the questions in this model, is this blank, right? And so you're filling in the blank of, is it true? Is, is what I'm feeling and thinking actually true about what God says about me or about the situation? Is it worthy of praise, right? We're working through all those questions. And then if the answer is no, the second set of questions is really where the change happens in my opinion. And it's asking, okay, well, if that's not true, what is true? What is just, what is lovely? What is worthy of praise about this situation? And that's where we really get to ask God for his wisdom and discernment and searching the scriptures to see what the answers to those questions are. And it's in answering that, that I think he transforms our thought lives, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And it's always going to, to scripture. You can always find an answer there. It, yeah. It's amazing how when you're in need and if you just ask for guidance as to what will help you today, mm-hmm. you're going to find those, the right verses yeah. every time. And yeah. the last thing I want to just touch on, um, Rebecca is you're big on time blocking and managing your time because every mm-hmm. single minute we have, it's a gift. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people get frustrated with, I can't, I don't have enough time. I can't get anything done. But in the book, you talked about, um, you know, how much time can be spent scrolling or doing mindless activities and how much that can literally take you out of doing yeah. what you're called to do. So I would love just because I am so focused on success without social media and mm-hmm. using other means, um, mm-hmm. you know, PR, SEO, things that where you can reach the masses and really make an impact but not have so much emphasis on social media where I think the enemy has a greater opportunity Mm -hmm. to distract you. And if you're Mm -hmm. not actively discerning or asking the Holy spirit to help you discern, you can go down that negative track of comparison and imposter syndrome. So I would just love to have you talk about what your strategy has been to kind of step away from that a little bit and do, do your your life, your business, everything you're doing the way that you're doing it. So it's successfully. Yeah. It's such a good question. And I'll use some phrases that are kind of real estate themed to think about this. And this is maybe helpful in kind of more of a mindset way. If we were to solely focus on social, we are building our business on borrowed land Mm -hmm. and we know that, right? So Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all of those awesome platforms that are free areas of advertising that we get to use. They're a gift. If we choose to see them that way, um, we can become obsessed Mm -hmm. with scrolling. It can become an idol in our lives. I'll just call it for what it is. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And, and so I love that you focus elsewhere because we're renting land there, but if we're not building real estate elsewhere, example, our email list and things of that nature. Um, if we were to get locked out of our account tomorrow or Instagram were to go away, shut down, go bankrupt, whatever, we would have no audience. We would have no clients. We would have no customer base. And so we have to have some strategy around diversifying where we're building. Now, does it matter that we have a presence? Sure. In, in, in my world, particularly as an author speaker, yeah it's part of the gig, right? It's yeah, part of the game. It's part of the gig. It's part of the gig. And so I have to embrace the fact that I need to show up with the challenge of it not becoming an idol. And we do that imperfectly because we're human, right? And so so that's I won't pretend like that's not been a challenge for me in the last few years because it certainly has been. But I think the more aware I am of how I spend my time and, and again, nothing about this is revolutionary. Time blocking is a very simple practice, but when I very intentionally look at my calendar and, and how I'm spending the hours of my work day, I'm then able to kind of take inventory of, okay, this is working. This is not working. I need to shift my time in, in this particular way. Um, some people don't operate at, at, you know, people are operate at different levels of feeling like they need structure or not having as much structure. And there's grace for that. And that's beautiful and good because we're all different. And that's the beauty in the body of Christ. 
I would say I am, I am very black and white as it pertains to time and the way I spend it and how I lay out my days. And, and that just works for me. If you are more flexible in that way um, and that works for you, that's beautiful. Um, I think that's different for every person. I just, I think what matters the most is that we have some sort of framework or system that does work for us. And I think some of us just need permission and maybe a big sister to say, go find that thing, like whatever it is, just make it work for you Mm -hmm. so that you're maximizing your time effectively. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love it. All right. Well, we have to wrap up and I'm so sad that we have to wrap up because I I can talk talk to to you you all day day. long. (laughs) Jinx. Um, so, okay. I know you have something super cool coming up this fall and I would love you to tell the listeners about that because listeners, if you're a creator and you've struggled in the least bit, you know, using that creativity to Mm -hmm. come up with the thing that you're going to do, you know, to really follow your calling. Uh, I think that what Rebecca has to offer this fall is going to be a really, really cool opportunity for you. Mm, that's so kind of you to say, well, I am so excited. This has been a dream of mine for several years to create, and I'm hosting my first getaway for creatives this fall in East Tennessee, which is my, my home and my favorite place in the world. And so I love sharing it with new friends. And so we are doing a cabin getaway for creatives where we will have time to worship, to pray, to connect with fellow people who do what we do, but then also we'll have time to just dream about a project that you want to take to the finish line, but you just need some feedback and some cheerleading from fellow creatives and people like you who do what you do. And so we're going to have time for that. We're also going to have time to kind of work through a start, stop, continue exercise where we kind of evaluate what's working in our business and what's, what's not working. What should we continue? Where's God leading us in that way? And so we're going to have some really rich conversations and just times to dream together. And so if you would want more information about that, several places you can find me. I'm the most active on Instagram. My handle is Rebecca George author. Um, My website is radicalradiance.live. My podcast, Radical Radiance, releases an episode every Tuesday. And we have conversations all about what does it look like to radiate the heart of Jesus in all that we do in our life, our work, our businesses, our relationships. So I would love to have you over there. We have an episode about every chapter of do the thing. Um, just finish that series. And those conversations have just blessed my socks off. So if there's something we talked about today that you want to dig into more, there's a whole episode there waiting for you as well as about 300 more. So um, would love to have you in that community as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and listeners, I will put the link to the book in the show notes as well. It's called Do the Thing by Rebecca George, and it is worth every single minute of time to mm-hmm. read it. And the bonus is that there are exercises at the end of each chapter. So, you know, I have an established business and I'm pretty confident in my calling of what I'm doing, but these exercises were really good. And at the end, mm-hmm. she has like prayer prompts. And if you're, if you're questioning anything, or even if you feel really confident in your path that you're on right now, I'm telling you, you will find little nuggets in the nuggets, nuggets in this book that will inspire you to even go the step farther. So Mm. I encourage you to pick that up. And again, I'll put the link in the show notes. So Rebecca, thank you so incredibly much for being here. Such a shining light to the world and, you know, just women in general and trying to get the word of Christ out there and transform lives. So thank you so much. No, Robin, I'm so grateful and honored that you would ask me to be your guest. So thanks for having me today. Of course. Yes. Thank you.